expression, it's the one that lasts. It will be very interesting because both, both topics are very fascinating. I mean, in my personal opinion, because I could, uh, I could ask uh, uh, Mr. Aydoan if, a, uh, if a, someone who writes poetry can be a politician or a politician can be someone who writes poetry. I mean, this is the question for after your presentation, after your presentation. And uh, the Borders, uh, Borders uh, topic is so, so exciting. So, and I'm, I'm really waiting for, for it to, to listen to it. Now, UJ uh, Aydoan uh, comes from uh, a well-known Kadir Hasa University, and uh, he obtained his PhD in Turkish language and literature, and uh, where he wrote his uh, dissertation on Oktay Rifat's poetry in terms of the concept of the economy of sense and the relation between poetic sense and contemporary critical thought. Uh, he is currently teaching on, uh, in uh, Kadir Has, and uh, his uh, research interests lie, more, lie broadly in modern poetry and analysis of literary, literary discourse. He's been uh, particularly interested in textual, textual self-reflexivity in poetry and novel, and uh, the way literary sense is produced. Uh, also, he's uh, dealing with the strategies of reading, of literary representations of body and processes, and questions of archive and technology, and last, but very important, with Heideggerian poetics. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Aydon, to you. Uh, before I start, let me thank you, uh, dear Ahmet Yikuk, uh, and, and and the Department of Turkish Studies uh, at the University of Cyprus uh, for... for, for uh, for inviting me uh, to, 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 to speak here uh, before you, okay? Uh, then let me start. Uh, today, uh, I propose to read uh, the great writer, Zavan Biberian's fiction, neither in terms of a social or socialist realist discourse in a Lukacian sense, nor within the framework of Armenian genocide, but in a more surface-oriented way, more at the level of surface cultural expressions. I will behave uh, Biberian's literary texts not as post-genocide documents, not as some Istanbul sociology. Okay, My reading will try to unfold a more political philosophical vein and, and and to explore the aesthetic algorithm that makes this literary corpus possible. Uh, Istanbul-born Armenian writer Zavan Biberian is not a classic type of social realist. Uh, his literary realism is beyond being an investigation into the deep structures or hidden truths or hidden antagonisms of modern Turkey. Instead, uh, his work attempts to map the cultural landscape, namely the surfaces of Istanbul that are the predominant generator of cultural uh, activity. Uh, here, uh, focusing on his novels, I will basically define a very particular and in, in a literary historical sense, a very singular thing that I will baptize Biberian surface not sentences, not succession of images, not other narrative units, but surfaces. These are the basic unit of his fiction writing. Biberian surface will be the name of a picture of the world in which everything, everything has become photographable. Photographable in Siegfried Krakauer's sense. Uh, you know, Siegfried Krakauer holds that Modernity is the aesthetic or existential state in which the whole world has become something uh, essentially photographable. Okay. 
Biberian's literary work is a transposition of this new shimmering reality, which is nothing other than a collection or archive of surface appearances. Uh, Biberian is a surface thinker. His writing is an attempt to direct attention to the coordination, to the textures and the experiences of surfaces. In general, we tend to disregard the significance of surfaces and the surface structures because we are geared towards a hidden meaning, towards a distrust of the obvious. Uh, of the paired terms, I mean, depth and surface, it is the surface that has the most negative connotations, conveying both superficiality and deception. You know, deep truth is thought to be lying behind surface appearances. That's why we have felt the need for hermeneutics, for translation, deciphering, etc. But now we know that surface is where all the action is. Following contemporary theoretical movements such as uh, actor uh, network theory, new materialism, design theory, affect theory, uh, surface studies, etc. There is an emphasis on the surface as the plane where spaces and times, affects and materialities interact and where these interactions can be traced. So the turn to the surface makes us aware that surfaces furnish our primary encounters with the outer and the inner layers of things. They are cover, epidermis, membrane, and skin. Surfaces also present us with our first experiences of the primary disposition of objects and bodies and life out there, beyond us. In other terms, humans, ourselves, a body of surfaces, meet and interact with the world uh, dressed in surfaces. In this sense, surfaces are the wardrobe of being. <laughs> okay. Harvard uh, professor of visual art, Giuliana Bruno, uh, investigates the surface as it embodies the relation of materiality to aesthetics, technology, and temporality. And in the footsteps of Krakauer's work, The Mass Ornament, she shows that the surface is our contemporary habitat. It is our architecture. It is our medium which connects and separates. It is our world unfolding. Uh, she holds that the surface is here configured as an architecture, uh, etc. Uh, I lost my notes here. Go back to my notes. Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, okay. The first thing that struck the eye of the uh, of uh, the eye of Biberian readers is that the world he narrates embodies a dystopic space of surveillance. Or to put it in more Foucauldian terms, it has a structure of panopticon in which everything is incessantly available to the other's uh, controlling gaze. In Metelixis Ashiklar and Yanuslar, uh, other people's gaze appear as a constant threat for almost everyone. Every character feels himself or herself under evil gazes. Thus, Istanbul or Turkey is portrayed as a space of generalized and irreducible surveillance. Sur and Norma, our panelist lovers in Metelixis Ashikla, live very hard times to find a quiet and safe place in the city for making love. From the beginning to the end of the novel, everywhere there appears a phantom-like, a spy-like figure which watches over them. Gülgün of uh, Yalnızlar, who is the emblem of genocide survivors living in Turkey, feels herself an outsider in her own house because of her evil stepmothers and stepbrothers' bad behavior and surveillance. In Biberian's narrative world, everything uh, and everyone is both a possible object and an archivable photographic shot of this generalized regime of surveillance. 
Reality gives itself to the one who experiences it naturally as photographed or photographable. Instead of a sense of depth, which connotes a semi-invisibility, shining flatness and superficial uh, intensity is emphasized. This reality is not natural for sure, but something you know, technically produced by a culture industry. In Biberian's fiction, uh, we see many instances of these uh, surface appearances that is produced, uh, that is articulated uh, with the hands of uh, culture industry. Okay, now I will specify two essential features of Biberian surface. Uh, first, Biberian surface is more than optical. They are haptic. The word haptic comes from uh, Greek, you know, <laughs> uh, haptein, which means related to the sense of touch. Okay. Biberian pictures the surface manifestations and modern urban surface and the body as fabricated with the sense of touch. Surface is not merely an optical phenomenon. It invites us to handle it, to touch it, or to be touched by it. Biberian surface is beyond being merely a visual item. It shows itself always embodied. In this sense, cloth with its fabric of textile is the determining item. Biberian narrates everything as if it is clothed. The sense of textile uh, and the predominance of fashion Describe the textured and the haptic nature of Biberian surface. Uh, you know, uh, you see the quotation. Uh, this is Gülgün touching her evil stepmother's fashionable clothes, uh, and Biberian pictures the scene in a very haptic and highly textured way. Okay, here Gülgün and her body not only touches the new textile in an erotic way, but also she comes to the surface of her own body. Gülgün's being is mingled with the fabricated matter. An admirer of illustrated magazines and a great fan of Hollywood star Elizabeth Taylor, Gülgün is nothing other than a haptic textile surface. Uh, here, Biberian describes Norma of uh, Metallic Sizaşıklar, the panelist lovers. Uh, Biberian describes Norma also as a, a textile screen, uh, which gives way to affective movement. Here, Norma comes out of her skirt. In fact, her bodily being is created by the touch of her skirt, not vice versa. She was wearing uh, her white skirt. She loved the skirt. It would accentuate her hips and legs. Uh, from this interaction, her body, her bodily being comes out into the uh, presence, into the presence. This attention uh, and uh, this attention to and focus on the haptic textile surface traverses nearly every character and every scene in Biberian's fiction. Uh, the, co the quotation, the third quotation, this is Norma talking about her ex-lover, uh, telling specifically his obsession with his clothes. Uh, not for a single day I have seen him, see, I have seen him without a tie, uh, and then trousers, and then shirts, and jackets, uh, sleeves, etc. The, uh, the fourth quotation uh, is giving place to Sur describing his father in a way that uh, his father becomes nothing but a mere material extension of his clothes. Uh, Sur looked his father from above in the middle of the trustee's dark jacket, special for Sunday and white shirt. He saw a yellowish sphere surrounded by a black semicircle. From the bottom of that pile, two legs of a pair of trousers were hanging in turn. His father comes out of uh, his clothes. Okay. Uh, haptic uh, code. Another perfect scene that shows us Biberian's haptic kind of surface materialism happens in Flea Market, where Sur uh, uh, of Metallic Sizarşıklar 
tries to sell his father's coat to get some money for his uh, personal love affairs. The way the shopkeeper handles and evaluates the coat is like an emblem of surface culture. The way uh, with the hand, with the hand, the coat's fabric and the pale light crossing uh, through each other, haptic sense comes to the surface in a moving way. With trembling hands, the old man untied the package, uh, skimming he curve, carefully turned the coat, hung the coat over his arm, waited, uh, snapped the coat, rubbed with his fingernail, scrubbed the collar, examined the hands of the coat, uh, et cetera, et cetera. This shopkeeper's hands travel the textile as if it's a landscape or a map. With his haptic touch, he connects different elements. The hand over the coat creates a connective tissue between different entities. That is the coat and the money. That is the matter and the soul or spirit. Haptic sensation works as an interaction zone in Biberian's fiction. In this sense, matter and bodies reveal their faces in the shape of a textured surface encounter. This is haptic visuality. In haptic visuality, as defined by the art historian Laura Marx, uh, in distinction to optical visuality, the viewer's body is more obviously involved in the process of seeing than is the case with optical visuality. <clears throat> hmm. Optical visuality refers to a mastering subject, while haptic one refers to unappropriable intensities and non-formal forms. Uh, this is Barrett uh, of uh, Karıncaların Gün Batımı, The Sunset of uh, Ants. This is, uh, I mean, the haptic visuality is to experience the world not in visual terms, but as a touching surface. World as affective touch on the skin, as Barrett of Karıncaların Gün Batımı imagines it. He wished, uh, Biberian writes, he wished to live not by seeing or hearing, but by touching, feeling, to live uh, on his fingertips with the touch of the uh, skin. Uh, and he, 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 uh, he dreams, he, he imagines his eyes to be a kind of brush uh, working on a canvas. That is the word. Okay. Haptic surface flees any visual regime. This is why a Biberian surface differs from, for example, a tourist visuality or a police surface culture. Biberian surface cannot be objectively photographed and recorded in an optical visual archive. This be whether a personal or a state archive because the haptic dimension of an image cannot be appropriated easily. Uh, okay, the second trait of Biberian surface, it is irreducibly uh, heterogeneous. A Biberian surface is always a matter of cross-connective elements. That is a space for difference. On surface, things of various nature interconnect in an always heterogeneous design. Instead of fully formed social realist figures, Biberian creates abstract and sometimes formless mixtures. Uh, this is Sur uh, in an emotional turmoil, cutting his face while shaving and rushing red blood and white uh, shaving foam. That is two different types of material intermingles in a delicate way uh, and consequently forms a perfect Biberian surface. So let me read the scene in full. Uh, but he bled his chin. In the blink of an eye, blood multiplied, starting to flow from his chin. He pressed the brush 
plastered the wound with soap, soap or foam and blood mixed together, turned pink like when cherry and vanilla ice cream melted and mixed together. Blood gushed from under the sound, under the soap, broke through the soap layer and become, became clearer, no longer flowed down. Uh, they constructed a kind of uh, a layer, a plane there, blood and foam. Pay attention to the imaginary or material transformation of the mixture of blood and foam to ice cream. Here, with the touch of ice cream on the surface of our tongue also, uh, here, a kind of haptic sensation is at work. An intimate contact, transition of different types of matter, the motion of a furious emotion is drafted onto the surface in the haptic thickness of blood pigment. Biberian's images show a form of visuality that muddles the boundaries between beings. So in Biberian's surface encounters, uh, new dynamics are generated, including an innovative form of materiality that is foamy, that is light, heterogeneous, diffuse, flexible, and permeable. Uh, uh, okay, but, uh, this is Biberian's own drawing uh, for his, 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 his work, Metallic Siz uh, Okay. Uh, huh. One more Biberian surface, one more blood drop. This time the blood drops from Gülgün's body. The Bachar Ali, who symbolizes the resentment of Turkish nationalist or fascist discourse, Bachar Ali cannot get the emotional positive reply he expects from Gürgün, and consequently, uh, he cuts her body into pieces with his Bachar knife. Here, the allusion to the genocide and the, uh, to the Ottoman sword is obvious, but Biberian puts something more into the description. Ali drew the knife, he felt that he had grazed the bone in his palm, the blood started to flow. Uh, the blood, here is important, the blood followed a curved line on the white poplin, on the white texture of the sofa, and fell on the ground, pulling on the parquet. Why does the blood make a curvature on the sofa? <laughs> Why this extra movement? Why this nonlinear heterogeneous contact with the fabric of the sofa? Here is not merely a description of a death or a killing, but I think at the same time, here we see a newly emerging form of life appearing. Blood moves, still lives. New material relations are unfolding here. Biberian wants us to read here a resistance in the shape of words, the power to create living surfaces, even just in a scene of massacre or butchery. Okay. Uh, I talked about two uh, singular traits of Bivarian surfaces. One is one was haptic visuality, and the other, the heterogeneous, sens uh, heterogeneous sensibility. I said Bivarian surfaces cannot be optically appropriated, cannot be archived. These are highly flexible and plastic entities. But in a world where everything has become photographable, uh, what makes these surfaces unphotographable? There must be some not easily visible deepness or thickness of surface itself. What makes these surfaces alive in their own way? Biberian's answer is the heartbeat, the motif of the heartbeat. Behind every surface phenomena, a heart beats in Biberian's fiction. The heartbeat is the perfect locus for Biberian to keep a secret without making yourself obvious to the other's mastering gaze. Uh, here I listed some, <laughs> some, some, some quotations from uh, Metelixis Ashiklar, which gives place to the motif of uh, heartbeat. Uh, in, every, in every literary work of Biberian, we see many, millions of hearts beating, okay? These are only a small part of the figures of the heart in Biberian's fiction. He seems like creating his characters is merely extensions or effects 
of their heartbeats. Gülgün, Sur, Norma, Barret, especially Barret. Uh, all these are, all these characters, all these bodies are pulsating surfaces. Haptic pulsation of heart is Biberian's invention to flee from visual panopticon. Heartbeat is unarchivable. Uh, especially, I want you to 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 uh, to direct your attention to the last uh, one: uh, the pleasure of listening to his human brother's heartbeat was something new to him. Hearts beating together from a distance. Uh, he says, hearts beating together, but at a distance. This sentence is Biberian's utopic closure of metallic's aşıklar. But here, Biberian uh, does not unify the heart sensation. Hearts and surfaces cannot be unified in a homogeneous way. He puts the mark of distance and difference there. This distance between hearts is irreducible. Instead of uh, Mark Nishanyan's equation of this uh, utopic desire of Biberian with the with Russo with, with Russoian state of fraternity, Nishanyan says that uh, Biberian's utopia is is, is 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 similar to 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 Jean Jacques Rousseau's. Uh, community, Jean-Jacques Rousseau's ideal community of fraternity uh, or union. Okay. Uh, uh, instead of this, I insist on Biberian's aesthetics of heterogeneity. Not union in any sense, but an intimate distance and intimacy of distance. Uh, heartbeat as self-difference. I guess in this matter, Biberian is uh, more close, uh, not with uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, but with Jacques Derrida, uh, who holds that heartbeat is the movement through which the heart separates itself from its uh, static state and at the same time marks its finitude. As the movement of self-difference, heart cannot be mastered, you know, it cannot be appropriated. Heart is the only locus one cannot habitate on his or her body. Heart is the most intimate thing, yes, but the interesting thing is that it belongs to no one. It belongs to no sovereign subject. Biberian surface as a heartbeat is like a home that is not habitable. A living home that is no one's. Unhabitable habitat. This is Biberian's utopia. Uh, thanks. Thanks for your uh, patience. These are my uh, sources. Thank you.